From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Developing overnight, a crash kills three U.S. Marines and injures several others during joint training exercises in Australia. We'll have the latest on the investigation. Alameda County's District Attorney Pamela Price defends herself before a packed audience with a mixed public response at her town hall on Saturday. Why do you run for a job to prosecute people and you don't want to do that job? She was, she's the, what the people wanted and we have to give her a chance. Plus an alternative view apart from San Francisco's so-called doom loop narrative. We'll take you on an up-tempo trip around the Tenderloin. Good morning. Today is Sunday, August 27th. I'm Max Darrow. Let's start the day with a quick check of our weather with First Alert meteorologist Darren Peck. Sunday is going to be a little warmer than Saturday was. First thing you can see, there's not quite as much marine layer out there this morning as we had yesterday. But if we do the comparison and take the daytime highs here for five representative spots, this is Saturday versus Sunday. So the numbers we're looking at are yesterday. Those are Saturday's daytime highs. So you remember what that felt like. Now we're going to slide out today. You can see everybody warms up. Some of us as much as eight degrees or maybe a little more than that today. So it's not like it's an impressively hot day, but it will be noticeably warmer today from where you were yesterday. Today. We've also got a little bit of smoke in the air. Air quality advisory continues through today. We'll talk about that as well as a more noticeable warm up coming up in the complete first alert forecast. See you in just a bit. Developing this morning in northern Australia, three U.S. Marines are dead and several others are injured following the crash of a military helicopter near the city of Darwin. Now, this crash happened at about 930 in the morning local time on Melville Island. A statement from the Marine Rotational Force says the Marines on the MV 22 B Osprey were taking part in an exercise predator run. That's a joint military exercise involving soldiers from multiple countries. Recovery efforts are ongoing. The cause of the crash is still under investigation, but we do know this morning that a total of 23 people were on board. Three of them confirmed dead, five others right now in serious condition. One patient is in Royal Darwin Hospital in theatre being operated on presently. Four more patients are in Royal Darwin Hospital. We have more arriving as we speak. We are triaging at the airport with the National Critical Care and Trauma Response Team with Care Flight and some are going straight to the hospital. Around 150 U.S. Marines are based in Darwin, and up to 2,500 rotate through the city every year. Alameda County's embattled district attorney, Pamela Price, showed up at a town hall meeting to defend her record. The main topic at the meeting was crime, as critics continue to demand stronger action from her office. It was the second town hall that Price has organized since a recall effort has started to pick up steam. Residents there confronted both Price and the police department about problems with public safety. Our Da Lin was at Saturday's meeting and has this report. I work at night and the crime has escalated to the point where no one feels safe. Many longtime residents have meant Oakland has always had a crime problem, but say never this bad. Some came to offer solutions. You need to expand the hours of your victims advocacy service and the services that you provide for mental health. About 75 people attended the Pamela Price Town Hall meeting at the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church in the Laurel District. Julian Hurd lives in the area and owns a bar near Lake Merritt. He says it's hard to do business when customers are scared to come spend money. Compassion, that don't work with criminals. He says Price has so far failed to hold criminals accountable. Her talents will be better in the public defender. I mean, why do you run for a job to prosecute people and you don't want to do that job. I mean, that was, that's kind of oxymoron. But Price supporters like Diane Campbell say it's wrong to blame the DA's progressive policies for the rising crime. They do the crime, they should do the time. And uh, I think that she's just trying to get the whole entire picture. The answer isn't necessarily giving them another 50, 60, 70 years on top of what they've already done. Price promised voters she would not try minors as adults and remove charging enhancements, which lengthen jail time. They're upset, but, you know, um, I think that they have to give her a chance. You know, it's, it's not an easy fix. Oakland police report while homicide is down slightly this year compared to last, robbery is up by 28%. Burglary also skyrocketed by 44%.
While Price did not address the recall effort, she wore a red button that says, Stop the Republican recall. Where these Republicans coming from, the recaller? It's the people who live here that ain't happy with her, with her policies. I mean, she can frame it any way she wants, but they would have to fly some Republicans in. Her campaign listed this town hall meeting under its website's Protect the Win event, and she gave a presentation of her accomplishments in the first eight months in office. She declined to answer any media questions. Your reaction to the recall, please. Your reaction excuse me. to the recall. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. Excuse recall, me. Please, please back up. Please yeah. back up. No, no, Thank you. It's a space that Thank we're you. all allowed to be. Thank you. No, I just don't. I don't want you to trip over each other. That's okay. You're going to trip okay. over each other. You're going to make us. Yeah. Hey, PA Price, is there a reason why you want to answer any questions? Your, your button says stop the Republican recall. Can you explain why? That was Dalin reporting. Price will host another town hall meeting in mid-September. That one will be at a Fremont church. In Santa Clara, two people were stabbed during a fight at an In-N-Out Burger near Levi's Stadium. It happened on Friday night, about an hour after a 49er preseason game. Police say at least 10 people were involved in this fight. The cell phone video on your screen, it shows people getting beaten up, many of them wearing 49ers and Raiders jerseys. Police detained several people, but they are still looking for a suspect in connection with the stabbings. Two victims were taken to the hospital. So far, no word on their condition. All right, let's take a live look this morning at San Francisco, the city. It's been fighting against a doom loop narrative for some time now, and a new Gallup poll on city safety paints a pretty bleak picture of the city. People were asked how they view 16 U.S. cities in terms of safety. Nearly half say they consider San Francisco to be unsafe. Dallas got the best marks. Detroit was at the bottom. With a lot being said lately about the social and economic spiral that San Francisco has been suffering since the pandemic, an anonymous individual was set to conduct a so-called doom loop tour. This tour was designed to show off all of the worst aspects of the city. But as John Ramos reports, things turned out a little bit differently. I was all set to hear how terrible the city of San Francisco was, but then something funny happened on the way to the doom loop tour. Some unexpected positivity broke out. This is where the doom loop tour was scheduled to begin in front of City Hall. It was advertised as a chance to get close and personal to the doom and squalor of downtown San Francisco. But at the appointed time, no one from the doom loop tour had shown up. And that's when things took an unexpected turn. And when we heard this tour being advertised, we thought that um, let's show them how to do a tenderloin st style. We don't engage, but we wanted to make sure that um, that the wonderful things about this neighborhood are also highlighted. Instead, about 50 people began a free walking tour of the Tenderloin, accompanied by a man who is well known here, the so-called mayor of the Tenderloin, Del Seymour. They describe our situations in the Tenderloin as a bunch of encampments. My people aren't camping. That's what we have offered them to live in. We haven't come up with alternatives. And when you walk through the neighborhoods this morning, remember, you're walking through someone's bedroom. Yes, there were people living on the sidewalks, and some were taking drugs, everything the Doom Loop Tour advertised. But Siobhan Allen thought it would be a cheap shot for someone to make that the entire focus. But one thing that we know is not to, to um, use human suffering as a way to make money and to um, highlight people's um, suffering in order to um, make a point. So Seymour pointed out the positive as well, like the towering affordable housing that doesn't exist in other parts of the city. He guided the crowd past the theaters that bring Broadway shows and iconic musical acts to the area and took them into the center of the glistening Trinity Place, the largest housing development in the city with its massive sculpture of Venus de Milo. And while nonprofits are often criticized, Elgin Rose, who founded a support group for Tenderloin Fathers, says they're at least trying to make a difference on the streets. And a lot of people just want to collaborate and come together and get it solved, but we just don't, we, we got to stop dumbing it down on what is happening. It's happening, but people want it better and it's not acceptable. The tour ended at the Code Tenderloin Career Center, a full-service facility working to get people back on their feet. Seymour says the idea of pointing fingers and focusing on San Francisco as a doom loop is self-defeating. We are so polarized as a city, I will not add to that polarization. 
that stupidity. We got one problem, but we got two solutions. That don't work nowhere. We can compromise and we won't do that. We won't go across the aisle. No one is denying that San Francisco has serious problems. It's not the entire story, but if that's what you want to see, it's right there in plain sight. You can save yourself the price of a ticket. So a lot has changed in San Francisco over recent years. Another store announcing a closure now. Today, after more than three decades, Nordstrom is closing its store in downtown San Francisco. A spokesperson for Nordstrom blamed the closing on the changing dynamics of downtown. The store has been an anchor in Union Square since it opened in 1988. Westfield has already started the process of transferring control of the mall back to the lender. The mall's former owners say since 2019, they saw a 43% drop in foot traffic and occupancy has dropped 55%. At least 22 businesses have closed or said they will be closing in downtown San Francisco this year. But while many stores are leaving downtown, San Francisco's new IKEA store is ready for business. Its doors opened earlier this week at the location along Mid Market. It's between 5th and 6th Streets near Union Square. And at the same time, San Francisco is making additional progress in filling vacant storefronts. The city has selected 17 businesses to fill spaces as a part of the Vacant to Vibrant pop-up program. They were chosen out of hundreds of applicants to get free rent and grants of up to $8,000. One of the first pop-ups will be a new location for Devil's Teeth Baking Company, which is popular for its breakfast sandwiches. They will set up shop in one Embarcadero in the financial district. Some of the other businesses include KALW Radio Station, a donut shop, a skate collective, and an art nonprofit. When it comes to a project decades in the making, the Concord City Council is hoping the third time's the charm. At a special meeting on Saturday, the council selected Brookfield Properties to develop the former Concord Naval Weapons Station. Now, the goal is to turn about half of the property, roughly 2,300 acres, into thousands of housing units along with commercial space. The rest will become a new regional park. The city had previously hired two other developers, but both of those deals fell through. 